Coming up this week, Google announces major new AI products that pile even more pressure on OpenAI, new AI agents that can pick up items from a backlog and then work on them independently, and Anthropic reveals exactly how its own employees use Claude at the company and what this could mean for the future of work. Stay tuned for all of that and more, and as always, if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So it seems fair to say that Google is on a bit of a roll at the moment. Fresh from its Gemini 3 release, this week the company unveiled a new tool for Workspace called Workspace Studio, which allows users to create AI agents that automate everyday workflows. So for example, you can create an automation that summarizes action steps following a meeting by connecting Google Calendar with Gmail, or an automation that automatically saves email attachments to Google Drive. So if we take a look at the UX, it seems that these automations are firmly integrated into products like Gmail, where users can open them up in a side panel, just as you might do with other tools. And Workplace Studio can also connect to external third-party apps like Asana, Jira and Salesforce. These new abilities could become a powerful addition to Google's AI product lineup and firmly cement it as the go-to for workplace agents. This week, Google also announced that it is testing a new version of Google Search, which merges both AI mode and AI overviews. In the experimental new version of Search, you'll see an AI overview on the results page, but if you click on it, you'll go straight into an AI mode to continue the conversation. Google's VP of Product for Search, Robbie Steen, says that this change brings the product closer to his vision for Search. And these new announcements coincide with reports this week that Sam Altman has issued a code red at OpenAI following the big strides made by Google. According to reports, in practical terms, this code red means that product teams are now being tasked with improving ChatGPT and pausing new initiatives such as advertising. This graph puts the code red into context, with data from a similar web showing that unique daily active users are now down 6%. The FT also published new data this week, showing Gemini downloads on the rise, with the data also showing that Gemini's users are now spending more time chatting with Gemini than rivals, including ChatGPT. Now, some of this may be driven by the new generative AI features that have been launched by Gemini, so in things like NanoBanana and the new VO3 models, which, given that they take a long time to generate those assets, could be artificially driving up engagement metrics. But based on this new data, it looks as though ChatGPT could be in trouble. This is a critical moment for OpenAI, who have pinned their growth strategy on their ability to leverage their dominance in the consumer market to then convert those consumers into enterprise customers. If their consumer business starts to fail, it puts OpenAI in a precarious position indeed, where the company struggles to justify its $500 billion valuation. Sam Altman is said to be keen for OpenAI to build its own suite of AI workplace tools to win the enterprise market, but new reports this week suggest that even massive incumbents like Microsoft are actually struggling to generate more revenues for their AI offerings. More on that later. But what do you think? Is OpenAI in an unstoppable doom loop that could see it lose its crown to Google, or are they simply too big to fail? Let me know in the comments below. Elsewhere this week, AWS's reInvent Summit kicked off, and the keynote showcased what Amazon has been up to over the past few months. Some of the announcements that matter to product teams include the launch of new features inside its AI agent platform, Agent Core, that will help engineers monitor the behavior of AI agents, as well as the release of three new domain-specific agents. These include a DevOps agent that will automatically diagnose incidents, security agents that will do on-demand pen testing, and an agent called Kiro Autonomous Agent that can pick up items from a backlog. So Kiro will read requirements, perform the coding work, and then return a reviewable pull request for review. On the consumer side of its business, Amazon says that its AI assistant Rufus led to an increased sales over the Black Friday period. They said that they saw a 75% day-on-day increase for sessions that included both Rufus and resulted in a purchase. So after a slow start, it seems that Amazon's AI strategy is also starting to pay off. And if you're interested in learning more about what new AI agent features world-leading product teams are shipping, then check out this week's deep dive over on Substack. In this piece, I take a look at over 20 different new AI agent features released from companies including Linear, Instacart, Cursor, Intercom, and many more, as well as newer startups. You get a breakdown of each feature, including its capabilities and how it works, along with a link to find out more. So if you're interested in learning more about new AI agent features from product teams, then head over to that on Substack. In other news this week, leaked UI screenshots suggest that Uber's product teams are working on a new AI assistant of their own. From what you can see in the screenshots, though, it looks as though the assistant will be bolted onto the existing search form to allow for conversational input. 
Most of the people who have seen this leak were wondering what exactly this assistant is for and why it's better than a traditional form. If the assistant doesn't do anything other than help users get a ride, then these are very reasonable questions. Now let's move on to some tools you can use, and we'll start with a new product called Radian. This describes itself as the complete product development platform, and it's a new integrated vibe coding app that will allow you to build prototypes from scratch. It will not only create the front end, it will also hook this up to the back end to include things like databases and authorization. So if you're looking for alternative tools for creating prototypes, then Radian could be worth checking out. The next product is a little bit peculiar, but I like the look of it, which is called Focus Room. So this allows you to turn your tasks into calming space missions. You create your tasks for the day, and once you begin work on that task, this becomes a space journey, and the longer you stay in flow, the further you travel. The space journey comes with space ambience, so in other words, calming, minimal soundscapes that are designed to help your mind stay in flow, and it looks like a pretty interesting concept. So if you're looking for new ways to stay focused and build on your productivity, then check out Focus Room. And the final product for this week is something called Lumos, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... Lumos is essentially a tool that will transform how your team gives feedback on visual designs. It allows you to create full page captures for both desktop and mobile, and comes with some advanced annotation tools, so things like freehand drawing with customizable pens, highlighter tools for emphasizing sections, and threaded comment discussions based upon the image that has been uploaded. So if you're looking for new ways to provide feedback to your designers, then Lumos could be worth checking out. Now let's take a look at some data and trends for the week. And there are two major reports that I thought you might find interesting this week. And the first is a new report from Anthropic, which explores how their own employees are using Claude at work. Now, clearly, this is a little bit biased, given the fact that it's been published by Anthropic themselves. But it examines how its own employees are using Claude. And some of the results are quite interesting. Here's some things which stood out for me. The first is that engineers are becoming more full stack. According to Anthropic, with AI assisting them, engineers are now becoming more confident on back-end tasks that they traditionally be scared to touch. This is altering the skill set of engineers and could ultimately change the types of engineers hired by product teams as the boundaries between different disciplines continue to blur. The report also says that 27% of Claude-assisted work consists of tasks that wouldn't have otherwise been done. So this includes things like scaling projects and making nice-to-have tools using vibe coding, so things like interactive data dashboards, and also exploratory work that wouldn't have been cost-effective if done manually. It also says that employees are developing intuitions for AI delegations. So in the workplace, before taking on a new task, employees are asking themselves the question of whether this might be best delegated to AI. It says that engineers tend to delegate tasks that are easily verifiable. And if you think about it, if this pattern is also echoed in users outside of Anthropic, it could have an impact on UX and design decisions, as users themselves increasingly think about what jobs they'd like to do versus what jobs they'd like to delegate. Workplace social dynamics may also be changing. Anthropic says that Claude is now the first stop for questions that used to go to colleagues, with some employees reporting fewer mentorship and collaboration opportunities as a result. The other report from this week is a new piece of analysis from Bain, which shows that 73% of companies now use AI in software development, which is up from 66% last year. According to this new survey, similar percentage increases were reported across other areas like customer service, knowledge working efficiency, marketing and other domains, and software development is the leading area where AI pilots are scaling. 40% of deployments in software development have graduated from trial, to full company-wide use, and AI adoption actually increases satisfaction. So users who said they use AI agents at work were twice as likely to say that AI adoption has exceeded their goals, and half as likely to be disappointed compared with using traditional assistants rather than agents. But while this data points a rosy picture for AI agents at work, the reality may be a little bit different. This week, a report claimed that Microsoft has actually lowered its sales forecasts for its AI products, after weakening demand from customers who were concerned about its reliability. While overall Azure cloud revenue is growing, thanks to spending from companies including OpenAI, who use their servers, traditional companies are struggling to quantify return on investment and reliability for things like multi-step automations. And finally this week, I leave you with a mind-blowing but reasonably dystopian stat, and that is that Suno, the AI music generating app, is creating the equivalent of Spotify's entire music library every two weeks. 
Some creatives, understandably, are not particularly happy about the growth of generative AI in the creative industry, and James Cameron this week labelled its use as horrifying. But to show you just how developed some of these music-generating tools are, we'll finish with a snippet of an AI-generated song called Code Red, inspired by the torrid week suffered by OpenAI. And I'll be back next week with another briefing.